The basic concept of bridge IDs are still the same in RSTP. That is, the lowest bridge ID becomes the root bridge. But if you take a look at the bridge priority, you'll notice that something doesn't quite look right. In the last video, we said that the bridge priority was in increments of 4096. But here the value is 61,441, which clearly is not divisible by 4096. So what's happening here? In RSTP, the BPDU message now includes a system ID extension field. On a Cisco switch, this is basically the VLAN ID. And that's why we see the bridge priority broken down into two parts here the priority and the sys ID ext. The system ID here is one because we're looking at VLAN one. You should also notice that the bridge ID priority is different to the root ID priority. This tells us that the local switch is not the root bridge. Let's take a look at our other switch. Notice here that it says this bridge is root. This means that the switch we're currently logged onto is the root bridge. Quite simply, if you don't see this, some other switch is the root bridge. Let's take a look at BPDUs again for a minute. In the original spanning tree protocol, only the root bridge would generate BPDUs and other switches would forward them through the network. The only exception to that is with TCNs, when a switch would use a BPDU to notify the network of a topology change. In RSTP, all switches now send BPDUs to their neighbors. These are a type of hello message to identify themselves and to learn about the other switches they're connected to. Individual BPDUs are no longer flooded or forwarded through the entire network. BPDUs are now sent only to the immediate neighbor. A significant advantage of this is being able to use BPDUs to see if an immediate neighbor is up or down. If three BPDUs go missing in a row, then the neighbor is considered to be down. BPDUs are sent out at regular intervals according to a hollow timer. This is still every two seconds by default. We can change that timer if we want to. In configuration mode, we use the spanning tree command. Notice that we have to include a VLAN number. This is a Cisco thing. They require configuration to be applied per VLAN. And we include the hollow time keyword and the time in seconds that we want. Now a quick architectural question for you. Why would we want to control where the root bridge is within our topology? 